So um, I'm Major Elizabeth Trahan. I'm a clinical neuropsychologist in the United States Air Force. I've been in the Air Force for going on about eight years now, and I currently work in a traumatic brain injury clinic and do um, a lot of work with our active duty members there and um, providing, you know, uh, cognitive assessment and informing kind of recommendations for rehabilitation as well. from it, um, I think that it does tap into a variety of different cognitive skills, some sustained attention piece and vigilance, and then we're looking at strategy for that that third game that's in there. They're kind of short snippets of that. I think, you know, um, definitely those are skills that, again, are used and that are valuable, but definitely, you know, those skills that I saw in the, the three tasks of the Echo game certainly are applicable and, and tap into those domains that we talked about already. All right, so we're gonna start off watching Hercules do track and react, and let's see how she does. I'm like extremely ADD, so this is either gonna be like really, really good or really, really bad. And somebody who has problems with attention is gonna struggle with this one a little bit. Uh, oh no. So this is really important for identifying the correct target. So again, you want to make sure the circle is dark for a dark target and light for a light target. You have to be able to filter the information and, and get them right on the right timing. And then avoid, you know, the spikes, right? So that's a no-go. You don't want to hit that one. This is prompted too bad. Connect the number sequence you hear on the keypad. This is really tapping huh? into divided attention. Can you pay attention to multiple Connect things at once and two, pick the right four, targets? Three. Oh. Excuse me? So this Hold number sequence is more of a working memory. <laughs> Um, so you have to mentally manipulate that information. Oh, oh, that is actually practice. something that pilots use quite a bit. What? Yeah, and the, the more that's coming at her, the faster it goes. It gets a little bit more challenging. You have to really Dude, those number things amp up your brain power numbers. here. Yeah? Oh, no. No, stop it. Yeah. So as you speed things up, the go, no-go task and the what? filtering of that information becomes what? harder because the stimuli are just coming at okay. you so quickly. I, one, three, four, two. I think I actually, no, oh, shoot, wait. Yeah, I'm so that's a good divided this. attention task too where you're doing one thing and then you this have to switch true. to something else, which is certainly very important mm -hmm. for Not people me. in a variety of <laughs> fields. Not me. Yeah, so I was just saying that it's also tapping into divided attention. So you're focused on one task and then it's asking you to do something else. Um, so being able to switch gears quickly is really important for a variety of career fields, um, you know, particularly pilots, but definitely um, other career fields in the Air Force as well. Okay, so for the second game, we're going to see how Tiger Queen handles hide and seek. When you hear this sound, use your mouse or trackpad to move the reticle in the direction it's coming from. What? It's not meant to be easy. Keep trying. <laughs> Warmer. Wait. What am I supposed to do here? Let She's doing a good job sticking with the here. task, but this is a hard one. Yeah, a little bit challenging. She seems really focused, though. Over here? Yeah. Starting to pick up that there are other cues you can use. Okay, this one I did horrible on. I know that. <laughs> right here? Right here. Let's try okay. Okay, was I just supposed to wait? Right here. I didn't say it would be easy. It is easy now. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the hang of it. My headphones are like uh old. It's possible, yeah. Um, I think Tiger Queen did well. You know, she said she was nervous at the beginning, but she seemed to keep her composure and um, was really, you know, focusing. She got quiet, was trying to figure out where those sound cues were coming from. Um, and she was persistent, you know, she stuck with it. So even though she was saying at times that she had difficulty understanding what the task was, um, she didn't give up and she was able to kind of keep trying, which is important. You know, perseverance is something that we all need in life. 
I definitely think having it be a novel stimulus or a new situation is important because it shows how people can use the skills that they already have and apply them to a new situation, which is certainly important for um, careers in the military because we oftentimes don't have all the information as prepared as we want to be. There are also um, times where we just, you know, we can't know everything in advance. And so you have to be able to go in, um, you know, maintain that composure, use the skills that you have on board and apply them no matter what the situation might be. So I think they did a great job um, acknowledging their their nerves. Um, but again, nervousness, if you, if you harness it in the right way, can be really helpful. Um, so too much anxiety and too little anxiety can be maybe not so helpful, but having a little bit of nerves on board actually can enhance cognitive performance and keep you um, on your game. All right, now we have Thea, the professional gamer, going through Detect and Intercept. Cyber attacks are a constant reality. Follow the pattern to defuse the attack. You saved another. Yeah, so this one's much more strategic and you really have to be kind of um, making decisions about which target you're gonna kind of go to and how you're gonna pursue the task, which I think is really applicable to more strategic jobs like cybersecurity where you have to be able to use those higher order cognitive skills to solve problems and um, complete your tasks. Let's go, what's coming to this one? You already know. So she's kind of able to forecast where it's going, which is helpful for her to have a more timely response versus waiting longer You're to figure out where things are going. And see it, yeah, it's starting to pick up and increasing the stress level a little bit about how quickly you have to make these decisions, please, figure out which strategy please, you want to use. Please. <laughs> that base is almost out. I think she's starting to feel the pressure just a little bit. That's okay. Sometimes that can enhance performance. The attacks are increasing and becoming more difficult. Okay, let's go. Yeah, very competitive. The base is depending oh, on more. I can't select She's very fast, which is important, but it's also important I'm to make careful trying. decisions, right? You don't want to be too hasty. You need to think about it, and you can tell that she's doing that here. Oh, oh my goodness. Is she down to one base? Oh, there no we go. There's no room for error. No room for error. So yeah, her reaction time was pretty good, really. It's our highest score. Um, probably why she did so well on that one. I mean, it might depend on the types of games that you play, right? Um, some games are much more speed reactive versus, you know, strategy based. And sometimes it's multiple things, um, but maybe perhaps those are the games that she plays more because typically the, the things that you're doing more often are gonna be those ro more robust cognitive skills. Um, so given that her reaction time is so fast, my guess would be that she has a lot of experience um, with reaction time and has developed some neuroplasticity there. I think that certainly people with a gaming background are an advantage in some ways and that they've um, spent a lot of time practicing cognitive skills. So again, there is some literature that shows that gaming can enhance certain cognitive abilities, you know, particularly attention and problem solving and decision making, which are very important skills um, in the military. And so it could give them a competitive edge. Um, I don't know that necessarily makes them better than other folks per se, but um, I do think that they, you know, have had some practice in those areas and have had the opportunity to refine those cognitive abilities, which can certainly set them up for success. So I think at the end of the game, you know, having people be able to be evaluated on their skills and how well they do on things helps to give them um, an idea of what they should practice and what they need to work on. I also really like that this gives individuals a particular career field that they may be best suited for or interested in in the Air Force. Sometimes what we hear from people is that, um, you know, they maybe didn't know what to anticipate with the job that they got or it wasn't the job that they were hoping to get. And so I think that in some ways this can give recruiting a little bit of a competitive edge um, for helping people be a little bit more knowledgeable about the career fields that are available in the Air Force and also to helping to vet people into um, a career field or an opportunity that best suits their cognitive abilities. This would obviously be used in conjunction with some of the other, um, you know, kind of vetting and screening tools that we already have 
have. But I think that that's really awesome to kind of facilitate interests in people that um, also mimic what, you know, their or how their brain works and what their cognitive abilities are. Well, I would say thank you to Dignitas for including me on this. I think it's a really great endeavor and a great recruiting tool to get, um, you know, maybe some diverse uh, skill sets here in the Air Force. And so I really appreciate your time and working with us too. And I'm excited about the future opportunities.